Hey everybody, my name is Philip Jordan, host of the Talking SEC podcast. And if you want some more SEC content, please go down in the description below, find the links, and you can check out the full edition of this episode. Joining me on the phone right now is Brandon Eiserman. He writes about LSU Tigers for LSU Tigers Wire and the Arkansas Razorbacks for Last Word on College Football. And you can also listen to him on the LSU Breakdown podcast and the Beyond Bleachers podcast. Alabama at the top. You go in alphabetical order here. They are the defending champion. We, of course, know Mac Jones is out. Bryce Young is in. And with this one, Brandon, it's kind of interesting to me because also you're going to have a new office coordinator. Steve Sarkeesian, of course, as everybody knows, he's gone off to Texas to be their new head coach. Bill O'Brien coming in uh, as the office coordinator. I think he's a good office coach, and he was a solid coach at Penn State for two years. I think this is a really, really fantastic hire for Alabama. It's going to be intriguing what he does with Bryce Young. Of course, he had a mobile quarterback with the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson. Uh, so I, I see this Alabama offense looking a lot different because now you're going to have a quarterback that can run. Of course, Mac Jones was not that guy. So, a lot, I, you know, long story short, I think the Alabama offense is going to look a little bit different with this guy at quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I certainly do too. And before I get to Bryce Young, Philip, uh, I also want to point out that Alabama hired my NFL team's former head coach, who we fired, uh, Doug Marone. Uh, so Bama has two former NFL head coaches on their staff now under Saban. Yeah, uh, that's big because I mean you can say what you want to about either one of them, and I hate to cut you off there, Brandon. Bill O'Brien did not do a bad job as the head coach of the Houston Texans. Uh, they were a playoff team pretty much most years he was there. General manager Bill O'Brien was horrible, and then you talk about Doug Marone. Look, they were a quarter away from knocking off the Patriots in the AFC Championship a couple years ago with Blake Bortles as his quarterback. I mean, that's how close they came to having Blake Bortles starting in a Super Bowl. I mean, and yes, it kind of fell off, but I think there were some locker room issues too with some of the players, and then just your talent fell off because you had to get some of them issues out, out of Jacksonville. So uh, both coaches showed that they're capable of being solid NFL head coaches. Not great, probably not Super Bowl winning coaches. But they're good NFL coaches. Now bring them to the, the college ranks under Nick Saban. That's what makes these hires so spectacular because those are two solid NFL coaches, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you put them under Saban for a couple of years. And who knows, man, maybe Bill O'Brien and uh, Doug Marone get some type of coaching you know, job back in the NFL in a couple of years. Who knows? Um, I think they're both going to be do really well under Saban. Uh, but, but to your point here about Bryce Young, man, look, when, when he committed and came in, everybody was like, oh, this kid's the future. All right, I have not seen enough of him to determine that for myself yet, but I'm excited about 2021. Uh, Bama has been on a roll, as we all know, since 09. <laughs> Even though they have not won the championship every single year. What Saban has done is great. Yes, we all know that. Um, but uh, you come in, you finish with, the top rated recruiting class uh, on Wednesday, and it was rated as the best recruiting class of all time. Now, I know that doesn't have a lot to do with Bryce Young, um, but that, that's still it, and, that, and that's saying something. Um, but I think with what we may see with Bama's new offense, uh, the fans are going to like it. I really think so. And I think Bryce Young is going to be able to thrive, and man, I, I just cannot wait to see what this kid does uh, this upcoming season. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Of course, weapons still be there. Yes, they lose a lot. Alabama loses a lot every year. But John Minchie is going to be a star uh, in that offense. I'm I'm 100% sure of. He's going to continue the streak Alabama's had with wide receivers. And then Byron Robinson at running back. And, of course, as I mentioned, Alabama's got talent coming in. There's going to be some impact freshmen there as well. Now, of course, we're not going to talk about Arkansas. We kind of talked about that a few minutes ago. Auburn, of course, Bo Nix. I feel like Bo Nix is going to be the starting quarterback. They won for Auburn. I know they they bring they're bringing in some guys. I feel like Bo Nix is going to be the guy. And look, Brian Harson, his track history with quarterbacks. Of course, he is now the head coach at Auburn. And you got Mike Bobo. I'm not the biggest uh, fan of that hire, but Bobo has worked with some good quarterbacks. You know, you can mention Aaron Murray as one of them. So and that that's the thing here. That's their challenge. I think offensively going into next season is can they fix Bo Nix? because he has shown some inconsistencies. He is not good away from Jordan Hare. Horrible on the road. His passing uh, completion percentage drops when he gets away from home. But his fundamentals have got to be fixed. He has got to stop leaving a pocket when he shouldn't, which I also know that's an offensive line issue that both those guys are going to have to kind of figure out what to do there as well. 
and you know just setting his feet simple stuff like that so that's the that's a big challenge for this new coaching staff is you know can they take Bo Nix to the next level because Bo Nix has the talent to be a really good college quarterback but can they work on those fundamentals to help him reach that point yeah yeah certainly Philip. uh look there's a lot of questions surrounding Bo Nix but my question for you is aren't you just glad that Gus Malzahn is not here to call the plays this upcoming season <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I think that's a, that's a side relief really for every small Auburn fan is that Gus is no longer calling play. Uh, but look, I, I think if if the coaches in Harrison and Bobo can work with uh, Bo Nix really closely, fix his you know fundamental issues, get him to set his feet right, get him to you know stay in the pocket or leave the pocket when he knows that he needs to, um, and just get him to be an efficient enough quarterback. To win over in the games that they need to win, I think he'll be fine. Uh, we all know that he's most likely going to be the starting quarterback in 2021, barring any injury, or if he just gets out gold in you know, spring ball or early fall ball, which I don't see happening. Um, I'm excited to see what Nick does in this new offense that Auburn has. And, uh, kind of like with Bryce Young, I'm excited to see what they both do. Uh, but I, I really want to see Bo Nick make a big improvement this year. That, that's the one thing I want to see. I want to see him be better in the pocket, make better decisions, set his feet right, make accurate throws, and you know, get open the way they need to be under the new coaches. Yeah, the only way I, for me, and, and the people out there listening to this uh, may, can, may disagree with me, but the only way I see Bonix not being a quarterback too is maybe if they hit the transfer portal and they bring in another quarterback from somewhere that can challenge Bo Nix as the starter. But I don't just – there's no one on this roster, to, in my opinion, that can challenge him. I, it will be a competition because that's how it is whenever new coaching staff comes in. And you'll find out who wants to be there too on the team during that whole deal with the new coaching staff because everybody's up for grabs. There's nobody's – or nobody should be be giving a starting spot. You don't have to work for it. But to me, if unless Auburn goes to the transfer portal, that's the only way I can see Bo Nix – not being the quarterback. Now for LSU, and I mentioned we we're going to get into this. We didn't really get into this when I was, you know, talking to you on an earlier topic. But I am super intrigued by this this quarterback situation at LSU. Look, Miles Brennan did not play bad this past season. He was not the reason why LSU was losing games. I mean, before he got hurt, he had threw for one thousand one hundred twelve yards, eleven touchdowns, three interceptions. He was playing really good. And then the last two games, obviously against Florida and Ole Miss, Max Johnson played. Fantastically, me and you have talked about this before. And overall, in the year, he had over 1,000 yards and uh, eight touchdowns, one interception. Of course, I believe in those final two games, it was six touchdowns to zero interceptions. Played really well in both those games. Of course, you got TJ Finley, super talented. You can see the athletic gifts there. You know, he had some issues with some turnovers in some of the games he played in where they lost. But Brandon, man, I mean, who comes out of this thing? And I think a more important question is with the quarterback situation who transfers? Yeah, uh, I, I was I was gonna say when, you, when we were talking about Bonix, you, you brought up those two words transfer portal, um, and I, I don't really think that someone's going to transfer just because of what they have now. I think it's because of the guy that's coming in, and that's Gary Nussmeyer. Um, Nussmeyer is a really really top rated recruit. That man, I, I, honestly, man, I don't even know. I, I can't process the LSU quarterback situation right now. Going into the spring. They've got so much talent there. Um, I mean, everybody can assume that it's going to be Miles Brennan, but Max Johnson played well. Finley played well a little bit. He didn't have struggles like at Auburn when they lost 48 to 11. That was a really bad performance. Um, but he's also really talented. And to really answer the question who transfers, I, I have no idea. Uh, I've talked with my dad on this. I know I haven't done LSU breakdown in a while. I'm going to do one soon, especially to talk about the quarterback situation heading into spring uh, since we're getting kind of close to that. Um, but if I had to guess right now, man, and look, I like the kid. He's a really good player, but I, I think it's C.J. Finley. Um, I think based off of what we saw last year from Johnson in those final two games, that kind of gives him an edge a little bit going into the spring. And obviously with Brendan kind of back, um, I think it's his job to lose, you know, right now. Um, until I see otherwise in the spring and early fall before the season starts. But if I had to guess, I think it's going to the transfers, even though he can work with the coaches and, you know, improve a lot. But uh, I think somebody's got to leave. LSU cannot keep 
four talented quarterbacks on the roster. I just don't see that happening. Not all of them are going to play. Um, but uh, like, I don't want to see Finley leave because this is Brendan's last year in 2021, so he would have a you know a uh, chance to start in 22. But I think when it comes down to it all, man, somebody's going somebody's going to leave. It's not that somebody's got to leave. Somebody's going to leave, and I think it's going to be Finley. You know, we look at the Mississippi schools, and and Matt Corral played fantastic at times this season under Lane Kiffin. Really, most of the season he was really good. But against Arkansas and against LSU, he had problems with interceptions. He threw 14 interceptions on the year. Uh, 29 touchdown passes, but 14 interceptions. So, of course, Lane Kiffin's going to get that, try to get that under control of decision-making uh, for Corral. I mean, like I said, that, that, was, that was an issue he had in some of those games this year. And then Mississippi State with Will Rogers. I think he played well down the stretch. They got got to win in the bowl game. Uh, so they got to end the year on the win. So did Ole Miss. So both both of those are intriguing to me. And I think, you know, everybody, you know, kind of jumped on Mike Leach and it was not working this year after that first game. But I see positive signs with both Mississippi schools, especially with their quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, I, I really do too, Philip. Uh, and I'll start with Matt Corral. Look, I've liked Corral since he went to Ole Miss. Um, I've been waiting on this kid to really kind of step out of his comfort zone and take Ole Miss to somewhere that they haven't been in a while. Maybe you get an upset win uh, over, over a, you know, a top two, top three Alabama team, maybe a top ten Auburn team, something. Like, I want Matt Corral to lead Ole Miss to a really big win in 2021. Uh, and maybe through the 14 interceptions. But I think if he can improve on that, um, just make extra throws, make right reads, uh, against those defensive coverages, I think he'll be fine. And then about Will Rogers at uh, Mississippi State, he did play well down the stretch. I think that gives him a lot of momentum going into this next season. Um, and, you know, Philip, I think that both of these Mississippi quarterbacks can surprise a lot of people this year. And, and man, I know it's only February, but I miss college football already. I'm ready for it. Uh, so give me these guys tomorrow on the field playing, you know, like – I want to see Will Rogers do well for Mississippi State because KJ Costello last year was all hyped up. Uh, he played really well against LSU and then just kind of fell off the map. Uh, and then Rogers steps in late in the season and does his thing. Uh, so I think Mississippi State's good at quarterback. I think Cole Mass is too. And when these two teams play at the end of the year, I, I hope it's a really good game. Yeah, it was a good one this year with Ole Miss winning 31 24, and I can expect good things there. I tell you what, I'm, I'm really excited about with these with these two programs. If we get SEC media days, which it looks like we're going to get that this year, those two, I don't care if we're just watching it virtual, if the riders aren't there, but hearing these two, especially Mike Leach, that's going to be the highlight of media days when we get there in the summer. Oh, yeah, for for sure. <laughs> no question. Uh, and then, of course, A&M. And, and look, it's, it's going to be interesting who becomes the next quarterback because Kellen Mond is out. And I, more importantly, they're losing four or five offensive linemen. Uh, but A and M did take that big step this next this past year, and honestly, and if there's A and M fans out there listening to this, I'm sorry. What I'm about to say may bother you. I think Kellamon held them back. So if they can get a more consistent quarterback presence in there, I think A and M has a chance to potentially be even more of a playoff contender than they were this past year. Yeah, yeah, I do too, Philip. Um, you know, last year when when they beat Florida. And they just lingered around there at number five with one loss all season long to Alabama. I'm like, man, this team deserves to get the playoff. Like, they really do. Their only loss is to the number one team. And I'm still kind of outraged just speaking about it that they didn't get in. But, 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 I, I get why. Um, I thought A&M really had a chance last year to get in after they beat Florida. I was like, all right, they just beat Florida. Like, they're, they're going to do it. Um, but going into this year, their quarterback situation is a little uncertain. So once they get that figured out, um, I know they lost a bunch of offensive linemen. If they can replace those guys and you know get the right quarterback in the, under Jimbo, I think A and M can make a run at it again. Um, I, I'm not going to say that beat them win the West or anything like that. I think they can linger up there kind of like they did last year. Um, but man, I, I think what Jimbo is doing at A and M is is awesome to see too. Um, and I, I think they've got a lot of momentum going off of last year. So if they can just figure out the quarterback situation, I think. 